Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. You know, I listened to a replay of the show I did last Friday, um, and I'll just be open and honest with you. When When I heard myself speaking, I could tell something was a little bit off. There was something that was was not quite right with my voice. There wasn't something quite right with what was going on with me that day. And and as I reflect back on last Friday, it dawned on me that when I woke up, I was in a lot of pain. Yeah, I was in a lot of pain. Now it wasn't and I didn't have a dental toothache or anything like that, or it wasn't the fact that, you know, I had walked down a flight of steps and tripped and stumbled and sprained my ankle or anything like that, or, or God forbid, broke a bone. Now, it was, it was the kind of pain that my body from time to time likes to resonate. You see, over a 27-year career in the military, I had plenty of opportunities to damage my, my body. And you know what? I did a pretty good job of it. I've hurt things. I've busted things. I've messed things up. I've strained things. I've done, I've done, you know, just just about everything that can be done to the human body. I think I've probably done it. And last Friday morning, when I woke up, it all came to a pinnacle. And when I listened to my voice, I could tell that something was a little bit off. And it was, you know, in re- retrospect and reflecting back, I realized that there was a correlation between the amount of pain I was dealing with and what was going on with my ability to do the radio show. Now, because I spent 27 years in the Army and because it was ingrained into my brain that you don't quit, you don't step down from anything, you fight through any and all circumstances, what I should have done is I probably should have woken up and, you know, called my producers and said, hey, you know what? Today is a bad day for me and, and maybe I ought to take the day off. But because of my mentality, because of, of the way I operate, I just fought through the pain. I think the information that I presented was pretty good information. It was information you needed to hear. But I could also tell that I wasn't at 100% strength. And you know what? In hindsight, I'm glad I did the show because it was important to get information out to you that you needed to hear. Uh, That's number one. That is the most important thing to me. But what if I was still working? What if I had been working for the municipality that I was working for a couple years ago and I woke up with that level of pain? Would I have been able to get up and get ready for work and go fight traffic to go to a job that was very demanding and not very rewarding and endure eight plus hours sitting behind a desk, you know, enduring that pain, trying to do my work and only to come home and not have the pain remediate itself. Interesting, isn't it? It makes you consider this. Are there days that you have when you wish you had not gone to work or days that you have when you wake up and and something isn't quite right and you deal with the concept of calling in sick? Some of you would do it. Some of you wouldn't do it. You all have legitimate reasons why you either would or wouldn't do it. And in my particular case, you know, I got up. I didn't feel great. I I took my normal pain meds like I always take. Um, It's you know, it's just part of my, my daily regimen and they weren't 
doing what they should have done to alleviate the pain. You know, who knows why? You know, I've, I've stumped many doctors. They, they don't know what the source of the pain is. They can't figure it out. You know, I, I go through pain management and, you know, they, they prescribe all these different things. They try different things. I've got a, another MRI scheduled on my back because they want to see if my vertebrae have compressed some more. Maybe that's what's causing the pain. They don't know. But I chose to do the show. And I chose to fight through the pain. And I determined after listening to the show that it had an impact on my performance. It did. I could hear it in my voice. Now, maybe you couldn't hear it, but I could hear it. And it it caused me to reflect. And it caused me to, to ask myself the question of, should I have gone to work that day? And the answer I keep coming back with is yes. Because the pain wasn't so debilitating that it kept me from getting out of bed. It wasn't so debilitating that it kept me from speaking. It wasn't so debilitating that it kept me from thinking and expressing my opinions and my my views on certain things. So I went ahead and I went through it. Do you struggle with those types of decisions? And are decisions made on your part based on the fact that maybe it's not really pain or it's maybe not something that your body is creating for you that's causing you to react a certain way? Maybe it's frustration with the work site. Maybe you had a bad day the day before and you don't want to go deal with it. Maybe there's something else going on on the horizon. Maybe you don't feel that you've achieved what you had hoped to achieve in life thus far. And it causes you to want to back away. It causes you to want to step away from what you're doing. It's an interesting concept. You know, the human mind can absorb a lot of things. The human mind can endure a lot of things. The human body can really endure a lot of things. I know this because I've, I've experienced it. I know many, many, many people that have endured incredible obstacles and still achieve the results they're looking for. So the question I have for you is this, are you really focused on what's important? We'll be back right after that. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. So in the last segment, I was whining about my problems. I was telling you about, you know, the fact that I suffer from chronic pain. And, you know, there are days that it it just erupts and it becomes a problem for me. And last Friday was one of those days. Now, it had been a while since I had such a flare-up. So, you know, it's not something that that I deal with. Well, I deal with it on a daily basis, but it's not something that impacts my ability to do the things that I want to do on a daily basis. But I also left you with this question, which is this. Are you focused on what's important? Now, how do those two things come together? Well, this is how they come together. I was doing... Last Friday, what I felt was important. I was not going to let anything biological in my body affect my ability to do the things that I think are important, which is sharing with you the good news about real estate investing. The fact that you can invest in real estate and you can change your entire retirement paradigm. I mean, you can go from a life of quiet desperation where you're focused on going to work day in and day out and you're focused on you know whatever your financial planner set up for you as far as a financial plan which is usually a 30 40 50 year long event which gets you to a point in your life where you hopefully have a big pile of money and then you start living off that pile of money and hopefully don't run out of that money before you die and then maybe you know if you did a good job of it you could have left some of it to the people that you left behind. You know, I was doing that for a long time. 
I'll be the first one to tell you that my retirement plan that I had through my early years, my, my 20s, my 30s, even into my 40s, was focused on completing a 20-year stint in the United States Army because it was at that 20-year point that I would become qualified, vested, if you will, in a retirement pension. And I get that pension. I do get that pension. And it comes in every month. That pension does come in. But there's a problem with that pension because that pension doesn't really grow. Yeah, I think I get cost of living increases, which are maybe like 1% or 2%. Whatever inflation's doing, they'll increase that pension by that amount. But there's no way for me to impact that pension or to grow that pension. That pension is going to be what that pension is until I pass away. And then when I pass away, what happens to that pension is this. My wife does not get to keep the entire amount. She gets 55% of that pension amount. So when I pass away, she immediately will take a 45% reduction in that income stream. And she'll be expected to continue to live off of that money. Now, that 55% that she's going to get, that comes at a cost too. Because every month, there is a portion of the pension that is taken out before I even see it, to go into what's called a survivor benefit program. And it's, it's paying into that survivor benefit program that allows her to retain the pension at 55% of its face value when I pass away. And there's, there's probably a, a pretty high probability that I'm going to pass away before she does. Now, I'll, I'll tell you something a lot of people don't know. I'm about seven and a half years older than my wife. I found myself a beautiful, smart woman who was seven and a half years younger than I was. And you know what? I couldn't wait to make her my bride because I had finally found the perfect person for me. And it saddens me to think that when I do pass away, She's going to probably continue to still live because women tend to live a lot longer than men do. I mean, that's, you can look that up. That's statistically out there. She's potentially going to have a period of time where I'm not going to be there. And therefore, 45% of that pension is also not going to be there. So she would be expected to live on that pension. It didn't sit well with me. It still doesn't sit well with me. You know, we also have been invested, you know, in the stock market. We'd been invested in whole life insurance and things like that. The stuff that my financial planner told me to, to go out and buy and quote unquote invest in. And, you know, over time it grew at a yeah, reasonable rate until you had stock market crashes. And then all of a sudden you look at your IRA and the dollar amount is like half of what you had. And 2008 for us was, was a terrible time for us. Uh, not only did we get impacted with the fact that real estate market dissolved because of all kinds of stupid things that the government had been doing for years that created that meltdown, we lost a lot of the money that we had accumulated in that crash. And because we had been investing incorrectly in real estate, we had been doing things the wrong way, we had a decision to make. Either keep the stocks that were declining in value or keep the real estate, which, you know, was not doing what it should have been doing. And in the meantime, we're in the process of losing our house. I mean, things were, were bad. Things were bad for us. And we made a decision to divest the stocks to keep the real estate going because in the back of our mind, we felt that real estate was still the best retirement strategy. But what we were lacking was a qualified education in how to invest correctly. And and I'll tell you what, I didn't have that education for a very long period of time. I mean, I came to the point where I retired from the military. I found myself financially not retired. I was physically retired. And the Army said, hey, congratulations. Thank you for your service. They gave me a flag, gave me a plaque, and sent me on my merry way. 30 days later... I got a pension that paid me one third of what I had been making on active duty. I had a huge financial problem again because my 
income stream was not keeping pace with my expenses. So what did I do? Well, like many military retirees do, I found myself trying to get back into the workforce. And it's not an easy thing to do when you're 50 years of age. It is not. So it took me 10 months, uh, burned through, well, I won't even get into uh, the, the financial crisis I created in that 10 months because I'll just let you know, it wasn't pretty. Finally found employment, doing something that I was good at, but I didn't particularly enjoy. I worked in an environment where I didn't particularly in- enjoy the culture. And I really thought I was gonna be working until the age of 70 years of age. And along the way, I stumbled across this radio show. And I listened to the concepts that were being presented on the show. And I decided to take my butt into a free workshop and listen to what they had to say. And I'll tell you what, it started me on a road to transition. And I'll get into that when we come back from the break. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. So are you focused on what's truly important? Now, a lot of you would say, well, yeah, I'm, I, I am. I'm, I'm focused. I'm, I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to do. Is it to be a good you know, mother or father? Is it to be a good family member? Is it to raise wonderful children? Is it to go to work and give your best and and always give your best? And what exactly are you willing to tolerate? Think about it. What are you willing to tolerate? Now, I know there those of you out there listening to my voice right now deal with occasional frustration. And that frustration can come from a myriad of sources. It can come from your family. You know, maybe maybe somebody made a bad decision that you're not happy with. Or it can come from your workplace. You know, maybe you didn't get the promotion you were looking for. Or maybe you got reassigned to a different team of people. And, you know, you were with what you felt was a great team of people. You had great chemistry. You worked well together. And now you're with a bunch of people that you know nothing about. You've got to restart from from scratch, literally, to, to build that team back up. Some of you may no longer be striving to do your best. That's right. It's called complacency. You know, you you can get into a mindset where you start thinking about the future and you start thinking about where you're at on the continuum of your life. And, And many of you listening to my voice, you're kind of right dab smack in the middle of it. Some of you are, you know, earlier in your careers. Some of you are later in your careers. I get that. But at a certain point, you start to, to question what you're doing. You start to question whether or not you're getting to where you're trying to get to. And it can be frustrating. I had what I consider a very successful military career, but it wasn't without frustration. I had frustration at times. I had frustration when I got transferred to a different duty station that I didn't want to go to. But the needs of the Army outweigh the needs of the individual, so I went. I basically uprooted my family, and I moved them to where I was going to. It didn't matter what my kids were doing in school. I pulled them out of school. It didn't matter what my wife was involved with. Now, her primary role in our family was to raise our children. And she did a wonderful job of that. But, you know, I basically ripped her out of the house that she created and and moved her to another house. I had frustration with promotions. I had frustration with the way the Army did some of the things that the Army did. I had frustrations with some of my leadership. I had frustration with some of my subordinates. I just, I had frustrations. But the key thing was this. It was important to me to keep doing the things that I felt were very important. And for me, my career was very important to me. Sometimes I think it was more important than my family. And I think I had those priorities kind of screwed up. 
And I've changed those priorities. I'll just be very clear with you. I've changed those priorities. I now put family above everything else because I think that's, that's very important to me. But some of you are having challenges. You're having difficulty seeing the road ahead. You know, for me, I, I had my target, literally, I had my eye on the target, which was getting to wherever I could get to in my career. And it was initially getting to the 20-year mark so that I could achieve that retirement. And then once I did that, I was like, all right, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. So now I could continue to focus on extending my career because my career was providing me a livelihood. But then I got to that point where the Army said, that's it, you're done. And I said, but wait a minute, you selected me for promotion. And the Army said, sorry, we have no place to promote you to. And because you've met your maximum gates, time and service, based on your rank, it's time for you to go. And boom, I was gone. And I went through a 10-month period that was very difficult for me because I wasn't able to bring in the income that my family needed to sustain the life that we had. It was challenging. And I did find that employment. I did finally find employment. But I was overqualified for the job that I took. But I put my pride in my back pocket and I went to work. But I'll tell you what, there was a difference between this new career and the old career. I wasn't always striving to do my best anymore. I felt like I was just going through the motions. I had lost some of my sense of purpose. And I was, I was just kind of floundering around. I was just kind of floating through life. It was having a negative effect on my mental state. It was having a negative effect on my financial state. It was just, it's what it was. And I, and I had no control over it. So I'm doing this job. And, and I was good at it. Don't get me wrong. I was good at it. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't shortchange the city or anything like that. I gave them, I gave them my best effort. When I was working on something, I always gave it my best effort, but my heart wasn't into it because I felt like I was lost. And then I found Lifestyles Unlimited and I went to a free workshop and I listened to the concepts that are addressed in the free workshop and it changed my focus. It gave me hope. It gave me inspiration. You see, they told me about what they did to change their lives. They told me about how by becoming a member of the organization, I could get myself on a road to retirement in five years or less. And the road that I was on had me working until I was 70. I had mapped it out. I was going to be working until the age of 70. There was no hope for me. Because even though I was quote unquote physically retired, I was not financially retired. I still had obligations. I still had a quality of life that I wanted to achieve. So I became a member. I went to the two day financial freedom seminar. I learned a lot of things that were not taught to me in school. Not at all. In, in a 16 hour period of time, I was immersed in how to successfully invest in real estate. I was shown the proper path, the proper map to follow. And I was able to restructure my life and refocus on what was important. I divested investments that I still held that were so-called investments. They were really nothing more than savings accounts. And I took that money and I started investing it into multifamily apartment communities. Did the change occur overnight? No, it didn't occur overnight. Nothing occurs overnight, but over time, I was able to reposition myself to achieve retirement in two years. See, what I thought was going to take me five years, I was able to achieve in two years just by following the, the principles and practices that Lifestyles Unlimited educates you on. And by surrounding myself with like-minded individuals who gave me hope and gave me inspiration, who helped keep me focused on what was important. And more importantly, I had mentors that assisted me with developing my roadmap. Tell you what, I knocked it out of the park for retirement. And now, now I'm working on this big, beautiful thing called lifestyle. When we come back from the break, I'll talk to you a little bit about that.
Luxurious Lifestyles Unlimited founder and CEO, self-made multimillionaire and national radio host, Del Wamsley, on the effective way to run a business. There are people that run their businesses on a shoestring. If you own an apartment complex and you have no cash, that's not a very effective way to run a business. My businesses, each and every one of them, have cash savings. In other words, we can make no money or make very little money. We'd still survive. For those of you that haven't thought it through that far and you don't have any cash savings, let's get you in here and get you educated on how to save what you already own. The mom and pop businesses are going to take a major hit. If you've been running your business that way, you need to get into Lifestyles right now and learn how to operate your business the right way. Lifestyles Unlimited has been helping people succeed since 1990. Join us for our free online real estate workshop and learn the seven principles we teach to run our businesses and provide for our families. Register at LifestylesUnlimitedWorkshop.com. with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Welcome back to the show. So I said I was going to talk about lifestyle in this segment, and and I'm going to address it. I'm absolutely going to address it. But I think it's important for you to understand that by following the teachings of Del Wamsley, and the Lifestyles Unlimited team, I was able to turn a what I considered a, a failing lifestyle into a positive winning lifestyle. And, and I did it by taking real estate assets that I had owned and owned for a long period of time that I was operating completely ineffectively and incorrectly. And I, I Turn them around from being a thousand dollar a month drain on my household resources to where they now produce a thousand dollars a month to contribute to my household needs. I'm not making this up. I'm, I'm telling you the God's honest truth. You know, I was able to get rid of assets that I had that weren't producing income for me. One of them was was a big chunk of whole life insurance that I was paying a lot of money every month for. When I sat down with a Lifestyles Unlimited vendor who is well-versed in insurance policies, you know what he told me? He said, get rid of those. I said, but you know, there, there, there is a safeguard. He says, you know what? You're banking on the fact you're going to die because that's when they pay. Oh, and by the way, when, when they pay, you're not going to be there to enjoy them. And I thought, you know what? He's got a point. He's got a point. So we replaced all of this whole life insurance that we had with term life insurance, which cost me a fraction of what I was paying. It enabled me to reduce my monthly obligations significantly. I was able to cash in other investments that I had. I was able to use the the money from those assets to redeploy into real estate assets. And those real estate assets are paying me quarterly distributions. I just got one yesterday. In in a time period where, you know, we basically had all agreed with with all the different investments we're in that you know, we were going to kind of maybe hold off on the cash flow disbursements because we were concerned that the asset may have been put into, you know, because of the coronavirus, that there may have been a hit on the asset. Well, there's no, there wasn't really any hit on the asset. It was negligible. So the lead investors said, you know what, we've got all this cash. We could continue to hoard it, or we'll just go ahead and start paying the distributions as we intended to do. So I I had distributions come in yesterday. You see, my whole outlook on life is completely different than when I was working for the city. I was miserable. I was, you know what? I'm going to work the rest of my life. And I was hating my life because of it. I was hating the commute. I was hating having to sit behind a desk for eight plus hours a day. And, And now... My life is completely different. Now I focus on things that are enjoyable to me. Now I can't go out and do a lot of those things because, you know, what's going on in the country. But that doesn't mean they won't be there for me when this whole mess alleviates itself. You see, I got my life back. And that, to me, is the most important thing of living the lifestyle. 
is having the ability to live my life on my terms, on my conditions. And it's cool. Cool isn't even a strong enough word. It's, it's wonderful. It is completely different position than I was in five years ago when I was going through my financial meltdown. You can start today by changing your life. All you have to do is make an informed decision that you're going to do something different today than you've done in the past. And I think the one thing that you need to do is you really need to take a look at how investing correctly in real estate can make a significant impact on your life. I know so many people who are living the lifestyle now. I know so many people that are on the verge of retiring themselves. I know so many people that are on that path to getting to that point of retirement. And they're all doing the same thing as I'm doing. Properly investing in real estate assets that pay you five different ways, six different ways. We're talking multifamily. What you need to do is you need to do one of two things. And I'm serious. You really do. I wish somebody had told me this 10 years ago. I wish that where I lived, this radio broadcast that you're listening to now was broadcast there so I could have heard the information 10 years ago because I could have gotten started 10 years ago. And I can only imagine where my life would be now. I probably would have never gone through the frustration of retiring through the military and not having enough money to support my family. It probably would have all been dust in the wind. But that wasn't my reality because nobody told me that there was a different way. You know, I'm, I look on the internet. Every day I go and I check different things out. And anytime you mention investing on the internet, all it tells you about is investing in the stock market, investing in the stock market, investing in the stock market. And I'll tell you what, I just don't think that's the right way to go because I know better now. Because I was doing that, it didn't get me to where I'm at now. Real estate got me to where I'm at now. The fundamental concepts taught by Lifestyles Unlimited got me to where I am now. So you need to do one of two things. You either need to attend a free workshop, and we've got them. We're doing them virtually. You don't even have to get in your car and drive to the office. You can just plug in and participate in a free workshop. Go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. That's freeworkshoplivestream.com. Get yourself registered for one of those upcoming workshops. It'll change your life. Or if you've got nothing to do tonight, send me an email at askal at luinc.com. That's askal, A-S-K-A-L, at luinc.com. And tell me you want to be a part of tonight's case study. See, we're going to have... Three of our members get up in front of the audience, which will, it'll all be virtual, and they're going to talk about their investments that they've done. We're going to have somebody who's just new to real estate investing talking about a single family property that they acquired. We've, we're going to have somebody else who's a little bit more along the road, and they're going to talk about the investments that they've made. And then we'll have another member talk about the multifamily investment that they're currently doing. And the key thing is this. They're going to talk you through the whole process. They're going to tell you how they found the properties, what they did to acquire the properties, what they did to remediate the properties if it was necessary, what they did to find the great tenants. And more importantly, they're going to open up their books and they're going to show you the returns. They're going to show you what the real estate asset is doing for them in their lives. It's an amazing event. And you can be my guest, but you got to send me that email at askal at luinc.com, and I'll get you registered. Now, if you're listening on the podcast, send me the email anyhow, because tonight is not the only case study that we're doing. We're doing case studies literally, I think, just about every week. So I will get you plugged in to the next available one if I can't get you plugged into the one we're doing tonight, especially if you're listening to me on podcast. I definitely can't go back in time. Let me tell you about Kathy. Kathy is a wonderful lady that I met at Lifestyles Unlimited. She is using real estate, specifically single family assets, to retire herself. She's almost there. 
And when she gets herself retired, I think she's got one more single family property that she needs to acquire and, and get up, up and running. They're going to work on, when I say there, she's a part of a, a married team. They're going to work on getting John retired from his job. And they're, they're doing this in a period of less than five years. I think they're right, right around the two-year mark. Let me tell you about David. David is the guy that taught me in my two-day financial freedom seminar. David was a guy that was working 80 plus hours a week in his stereo stores and letting his family do whatever they were going to do because he wasn't involved. He got out of stereo stores, got into real estate investing. He made, I think he told me something like $2 million last year off of his investments. These are real people with real results. And I, I'm imploring you to take action. So either send me that email that you want to attend a case study at askal at luinc.com or, or go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. And you can, you can start the way I started, by attending a free workshop, listening to the concepts that we present, and realizing that there's a better way. And remember, it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.